Freerun Beyond Journey's End is a fantasy adventure anime based on a manga written by Kenhito Yamada and is animated by Madhouse, the studio behind last year's Gene of AI and My Love Story with Yamada-kun at level 999. This series follows an elven mage named Freerun who embarks on a journey to a place called Alarole, also known as Heaven, to speak with her deceased comrade, Hemo the Hero. The first four episodes serve as a prologue to the the main story and introduces several key characters including Freerun's former companions, Aizen the Warrior and Heiter the Priest. The show begins shortly after their party returns from defeating the Demon King. Following a night of celebration, the group goes their separate ways only to meet up again decades later to watch a meteor shower. When Hemo dies sometime after, the remaining members of the hero's party attend his funeral and then part ways again. Many years later, Freerun visits them both, offering to assist them in any way she can. Knowing how deeply she regrets not getting to know Himmel, Aizen urges her to go to heaven so that she can speak to him. The rest of the series takes place nearly three decades after Himmel's death as Freerun starts traveling toward Alarole with Heiter's adopted daughter Fern and Aizen's apprentice Stark. This show was the best new fantasy anime to premiere last year and is certainly a must watch for fans of the genre. Freerun's first half covers close to four story arcs. As the group makes their way across the continent to the northern lands, they occasionally stop at a nearby village or town, helping others along the way. Sometimes their progress may be hindered until a situation is resolved, leaving them stuck in one location for an extended period of time. While there is certainly a pattern that this anime loosely adheres to, the plot deviates enough to keep things from feeling repetitive or too formulaic. One quick example of this would be a scene later in the season where the carriage the group is traveling in is suddenly picked up by a giant flying monster. It's random unexpected moments like this that help to keep this series engaging, especially during the long stretches without any action. As Freerun continues to retread the path she once took to the Demon King's castle, she is reminded of her adventures with Himmel and the others. This show is filled with cutaways and flashbacks to her time spent traveling with them. These flashbacks are typically related to the current scene in some way or are simply there to provide a bit of comedic relief depicting many of the ridiculous moments that occurred throughout their 10 year adventure. Of course, some flashbacks are used to flesh out a character's backstory or to provide context for what's going on or about to happen next. Regardless of whether it's inserted for comedic or expository purposes, these scenes never detracted from the show's pacing. Also, any exposition delivered through character dialogue is generally brief and felt organic in its placement. Episode 10 probably contains the most amount of exposition as it splits its focus between Freerun's past with her master, Flamme the legendary mage, and the current conflict with a demon named Aura the Guillotine. Speaking as someone who has never read the manga, the anime seems like it's paced pretty well. This series contains numerous montage sequences, usually showing the characters going about their daily life. Over the course of these montages, a certain amount of time might pass, but it never felt like the studio was rushing through stuff just to get to the next plot point. I think Madhouse does a great job conveying the passage of time through these sequences and a few time lapse shots throughout the show. Moreover, I appreciate how much character and personality is packed into these short compilation scenes. There's a lot that is either conveyed indirectly or can be inferred about these characters based on their behavior and how they go about their lives. The little characteristics depicted during these montages are reinforced explicitly later on by those around them. In general, the characterization for Freerun and her friends is excellent. I was surprised by how Yamina wrote the protagonist and how expressive she is. Based on the previews, I thought she would be a much more stoic character than how she's actually portrayed. Freerun is apathetic to a certain degree, but finds joy in her hobby of collecting spells. She is much more self-centered compared to someone like Fern, Himmel, or Stark, who tend to act selflessly and are a lot kinder. 
Although she can be a bit cold-hearted, Freeman isn't completely heartless and grows to be more considerate of others thanks to Himmel and Fern. Due to being an elf, she has lived for a long time and generally sees the world differently than most people. I love how warped her sense of time is compared to everyone around her. Freeman's inaccurate perception of time results in some amusing exchanges between her and several characters throughout the show. Moreover, this misconception is likely why she tends to do most things at a leisurely pace much to the disapproval of Fern who is easily annoyed by many things. Compared to Freerun, Fern is way more responsible and altruistic. She oftentimes behaves more like an adult than her. While she is usually polite and tends to speak formally to everyone she meets, Fern can be rather cold and unfriendly towards Stark. Fern is the only character in the main cast I could see some people not liking due to how she belittles him for his spineless behavior and immaturity. She tends to show Stark very little respect and sometimes her harsh attitude towards him is kinda unwarranted. There were times where she got mad at him despite Stark not doing anything at all. Even so, Fern's actions aren't rooted in hatred towards him and the moments where she's mean to Stark are mostly played up for laughs and are typically very funny. Fern and Stark have some great scenes together and I really enjoyed the interactions between them. Stark is a very well written, cowardly character who has a fantastic introduction earlier in the season. He comes from a fallen warrior village located in the Central Lands and is an orphan like Fern. Despite the sharp difference in their personalities, the pair actually have a few things in common. For example, they both work diligently when it comes to their training, and as I mentioned earlier, they won't hesitate to help others in need. Also, similar to how Fern wanted to reciprocate Hyther's kindness, Stark seeks to repay Aizen for raising him by going on a journey with Freerun so that he can share his stories with him. The show focuses heavily on this character during the second half of this anime's first core. Although Yamada frequently uses Stark for comedic relief, he doesn't neglect to touch on his relationship with Aizen or the lack of love and acknowledgement he got from his father. The latter half of episode 15 pushes Stark to the forefront when the group accepts a job from Lord Orden the head of a prestigious family in the Northern Lands. There are some great but obvious parallels between Stark, Orden, and the situation with their families. The scene where Orden trains Stark perfectly highlights how the absence of parental affection and encouragement from his dad affected his self-confidence. Stark's biggest issue though is his lack of courage when up against powerful enemies. He often puts up a cold brave facade right before expressing how afraid he is and begging for help. Due to the way Yamada wrote him and the performance of his voice actor, Stark never came across as irritating whenever he began to whine or freak out about having to fight something really strong. If anything, that cowardly side of his was always amusing. Part of Stark's growth so far has been learning to push past his fear and find his resolve despite being afraid. Another character that gets a significant amount of attention in the latter half of the first core is Sign, a priest that temporarily joins Freeman's party to search for his childhood friend. Although Sign's the most mature one in the group, he's also far less virtuous than the rest of his allies. He has a couple good scenes with Freerun. One in particular ties back nicely with some moments that she has with Hyter. Speaking of Hyter, he and the other members of the Heroes Party are still an essential part of the story even though they're no longer traveling beside her. Yamada elaborates upon these characters through the multitude of flashbacks and conversations that Freerun and her companions have about them. They're given enough screen time for the audience to grow attached to them and get a good grasp on who they are. There are multiple scenes that show how vain Himmel was about his looks, how ungodly Hyther's behavior is in spite of being a priest, or how odd Aizen's body is. In addition to having a well-written cast of characters, the world building in this anime is also pretty solid. Yamada gradually expands on the many facets of Freerun's world, giving the audience insight into its history, geography, and various traditions practiced by people from different lands. 
The world is quite dense and it seems to contain some pretty unique monsters, a few of which the group encounters on their trek to Alarole. For example, this show's depiction of demons is very distinct from any other interpretation I've ever seen before. Just like another creature Friedrin and Fern come across earlier in the season, these monsters use an unorthodox method to devour their prey. The group of demons that serve as the main antagonists of the demon infiltration arc were an interesting threat for Friedrin's party to deal with. That story arc is the best one so far as it not only contained a good amount of world building and fleshed out Friedrin's backstory but it also has a healthy amount of fight sequences too. This series is pretty light in regards to action scenes at least during its first core. Part 1 has about a dozen fight sequences most of which are fairly quick. A couple of the biggest action scenes take place during the demon infiltration arc as Fern and Stark battle two powerful demons, Lenya and Lugnir. These fights showcase how strong they've become and were very entertaining. Additionally, both of these sequences were well animated and featured some solid camera work. That said, Fern's action scene was much more dynamic than Stark's clash with Lenya as the studio constantly moved the camera around and switched perspectives during that battle. What made Stark's fight so exhilarating was more so the pacing and choreography rather than how the studio utilized the camera. Regardless, both of those action scenes were expertly crafted and are some of the best battles in the anime so far. Madhouse has been killing it from a production standpoint. The studio has done an outstanding job handling the cinematography and the animation throughout the series. The animation quality is consistently smooth with the animators going for an approach that typically favors elegance over flashiness. This season has only one action sequence that I would truly consider Sakuga and that would be the scene where Stark fights a dragon in episode 6. Although it's not as long as the battles I've already mentioned, it has a good sense of scale and some cool shots, like Stark briefly hanging from the side of the dragon or the moment where he delivers the final blow. Animation aside, the studio tends to be very deliberate with how they utilize the camera and the lighting in particular scenes in order to convey the emotions of certain characters to the audience. For example, during a flashback scene in episode 9, they switch to a first person perspective of Fern's feet as she walks forward to visually reinforce the idea that she lacked confidence in her skills at that time. Another quick example I can give is one particular moment during the apology scene in episode 14. By briefly switching the focus to Stark's hand as he talks to Fern, they're able to help convey the anxiousness he felt about the situation as he clenches and eventually relaxed his fist. Generally speaking, the dramatic scenes were well executed and the performances for both the English and Japanese dub were quite good. Freeland's English voice actress Mallory Rodak did a great job with the emotional scenes and really brings out the character's personality. It would be quite remiss of me not to acknowledge this show's wonderful soundtrack by composer Evan Call. These tracks don't just sound like generic fantasy background music. They fit the setting perfectly and help keep the viewer immersed in Freerun's world. Furthermore, the music complements each scene it's inserted in by evoking certain emotions from the audience. Madhouse has done a pretty good job integrating these tracks into certain scenes. There are moments where the music is perfectly synced to what's happening on screen. In addition to having a memorable OST, this anime's opening and ending songs are excellent as well. Anyway, based on the episodes that have aired so far, I'd say this show has a fairly strong narrative which the author uses to explore ideas surrounding the themes of life, death, and nostalgia. Friedman's story shows the importance of connections and the impact someone can have on your life 
regardless of how short your time spent with them was. Yamada uses various characters to touch on the human desire to be remembered and celebrated for one's accomplishments. He isn't too heavy handed with the overall message of being open with others while you can and to cherish the memories you make with them. Overall, Free Ren Beyond Journey's End is an outstanding anime with a memorable cast of characters, interesting plot, unique world, and gorgeous animation. Although the pacing is good and the action scenes are very well done, those expecting a more action-packed show will be disappointed. However, if you're looking for a more thoughtful character-driven fantasy series with no fan service, then I highly recommend giving this anime a shot. If you've seen this show, let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.